the general goal is to support these new kinds of research. That are, they're being called almost a, a fourth paradigm of very distributed, very data and information intensive, and the idea that you can use other people's data as well as your own in a collective mix-up, mash-up kind of way in this environment. That we tend to work in very distributed ways, we tend to collaborate, we have virtual organizations, and we tend to work across, across disciplines. This is an NSF picture of what cyber infrastructure looks like. We're pretty good at pulling things together if they've got bibliographic citations between them. You, know, you can look at something that was cited, you can click on that and move to it and move that. But we're not very good yet at being able to move from the grant proposal to the talk to the conference paper to the data. And we would like to do that across different kinds of environments and move out of these, these silos that we have, and that the, the silos are part of the problem. One of my colleagues at UCLA recently uh, said, we don't have silos, we have columns of excellence. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, that term quickly stuck. So I think we, it's interoperability between columns of excellence that we have to work on. The Sloan is interesting for, for a number of reasons. One is that it instantiates this value chain. They have been scanning the night sky for about the last 10 years, actually a quarter of the night sky, and it got richer and richer as time went down. This is a project that is now shutting down and going into more of an archive mode. Note this particular shot that I put up here is one where you can see the publications. More than 1,700 scholarly publications came out of this data set. So you can look at a data set, find the publications. You can look at the publications, you can go to the data set. The vast majority of use of this site was by non-astronomers, very heavily used by uh, students, very heavily used by amateur astronomers as well. So there's your value chain. You can go in both directions with it. Another thing that's important by the Sloan Digital Sky Survey is how it changed the culture. Of, the, of this particular science. Like many other sciences, people tend to get their own data and collect it and hold it. Da data mining meant the data are mine. Okay. <laughs> what Sloan did, and Alex Zale and the late uh, Jim Gray, the Turing Award winner who disappeared at sea about two years ago, were the, the ones behind this. They promised if they got the money from Sloan, they would make the data publicly available. Anybody could mine it. And they did. And once they did it and everybody started using it, then it became much harder for other people to try to protect their own data because once this got out into the open. So it's one, one big project and kind of you know, break, the, uh, break the back and, and move things forward. Why should people share whether their data or their publications? Why should they contribute to this cyber infrastructure? Okay. So, as I said, you've got the general, we're here to share, it's not science, it's not scholarship until somebody's had a peer review, we're supposed to get out there. Okay. We want to be recognized by our peer, look at our publications, we want to collaborate with other people, and often that's what we collaborate about. And right up front you have your data manager plans and say, we, we produce these data together, we all have access to them, who has the rights to them at the end of the project. Reciprocity, you might share them with other people that you're not directly collaborating with. And lastly is good old coercion. Okay. We've got a lot more carrots than sticks in academe. But if your funding agency says you're not getting the last payment on your grant until you post your data, well, that, that, that's coercion. You're starting to see that more in Europe than you are uh, than you are here. But you are starting to see requirements for data management plans. Into, uh, into grant proposals. So there's a, a, certainly a social change going on in this environment. And we're seeing a lot of change now in this general open access area. And open access is not just about let's bring down the publishers, and that's certainly how the publishers are, are reacting to it, uh, but I think more importantly it's about interoperability. If you, we're really going to have truly open science and open scholarship if we're, if we're going to get 
uh, some links across these, these columns of excellence. We, we can't have them all locked up in proprietary formats and formats that are really too deeply bound in individual disciplines that you can't get between them. So this is where we're concerned about, you know, how do you mix it up, how do you mash it up, how do you avoid getting locked in to one technology, one ontology, one, uh, one different structure and bringing them together. You know, the technology is always a lot easier than the policy or uh, than the behavior change in this, uh, when we're moving forward. There's plenty of incentives for people not to share. We still get rewarded for publishing things. Nobody ever got tenure for, for writing really good metadata. Okay. Not yet, anyway. Okay. But that's, you know, it, it may change, but it's going to take a while. Uh, bef and it's going to be a lot easier to get things in. It's much harder to document your data in ways that other people can make sense of it than it is to document it if you're just using it by yourself or in your own laboratory. Although people will certainly give you plenty of tales of how when the postdoc graduated or postdoc left the lab, those data could never be found again or, or interpreted again. So if you do document them, if you do get processes going in your lab or in your team, you're much more likely to make use of them within your own group. Okay. And we're trying to encourage people under those reasons, if no other. Competition and priority of claims. If you deposit your data, then you don't have it to barter with anybody else anymore. Okay. But on the other hand, if you're in a field where you've got a culture of sharing, then maybe if you don't share your data, nobody else is going to share their data with you either. Okay. So there's, it, it's shifting a bit, but it, it varies from one to another. The priority of claims is, uh, is being dealt with with things like the embargo periods, and those are being worked out within individual fields. And uh, lastly, we can go into you know, much more detail probably in discussion, probably should, around some of the intellectual property issues, and these vary considerably between the sciences, the social sciences, and the humanities, and the arts. And um, they're, they're two-sided. They're, they're both people wanting to control their own resources and in getting access to other people's resources. So it's, um, you, it would be lovely if you could keep everything of your own and not release it, but you could have everybody else's, and of course it doesn't work that way. 